stuff here. I'm doing it again. On the monster. Commuting to work. Feel sort of klutzy right now. Got my backpack on, jeans, long sleeve shirt. Had the knee pads on, I had the seat on the monster. So, um, I, don't, I don't feel very well connected to the wheel right now. Just kind of feel like I'm uh, pushing a wheelbarrow a little bit. And early on here, you don't have good visibility. I'm getting to the street light section, so it should be better. Somewhere around 6.15, 6.20, something like that. I left, I'm leaving slightly earlier than I did uh, last year when I did this. Temperature's in the uh, low 60s right now, hence the long sleeve shirt. I do have my uh, elbow pads on underneath here, in case you were wondering. I'm, uh, I'm not wearing a GPS this time, but I do have Strava running on my phone, so I should have a somewhat accurate uh, recording of the journey. I also plan to be using more bike lane this time. Last year I used almost all sidewalk, but I'm going to be using a bike lane to uh, speed things up a little bit, as much as I can. Already had a few morons uh, not give me the space that they could, you know. But of course, that's always the biggest concern in something like this: is uh, distracted idiot drivers looking at their cell phones, uh, not paying attention. So that is always a risk that you run. The monster is pretty well lit up, and Cindy put additional reflective material on the wheel as well. So I should definitely be very visible. Not bike paths, but pedestrian paths. I am going to use them. So, for example, at Heritage Bay, at Heritage Bay, I'm going to get off there and use the uh, the trail there down to Collier. Toughest thing is I'm really trying to keep an eye on the bike lane, make sure I avoid any uh, potential obstacles. Not the easiest thing to do. See, I have Matthias's mud guard on the back of here, so this will be a good uh, test to see how it holds up on uh, road usage. See how well it sticks back there. Again, I don't have my GPS on, so I can't see my real real-time speed but it feels like we're trucking pretty good right now probably in the vicinity of 20 and when these dump trucks and uh, tractor trailers go by it's a little hairy you know because they don't have a lot of room to move left so uh, you can really feel it Bay. I will be getting off the road here for a little bit. Be nice. Yeah, much nicer. It's so, I mean, it's so loud on the road there with all those cars. I mean, look, it's just a non stop stream of uh, rush hour traffic. So, whenever I get an opportunity to ride sections like this, I'm going to definitely take advantage of it. 
Uh, so I don't think I mentioned, I mentioned the round trip should be somewhere around 50 miles. Each way it's like between 23 and 24 miles. And then uh, I'm throwing in my, uh, if I take this to the gym, that's another couple miles. So that's where I get my 50 total miles, uh, if successful. I guess I should take advantage of the seat while I can. It's much easier on these paths than it is uh, on the road. I don't think I would do this uh, during rush hour traffic. Okay, so I'm uh, approaching Collier here, Collier Boulevard. I'll be sneaking around the path and uh, just, I, I guess I'll cross in the crosswalk. And then there's another uh, bike slash pedestrian path that I can take all the way up to uh, Vanderbilt Beach Road. All right, right now it's 6.48. All right, here we go. We've successfully crossed. And we're now on Collier Boulevard. Next turn will be onto Vanderbilt Beach Road. Vanderbilt Beach Road, waiting to cross here. So again, I'm uh, utilizing the bike lane here in Vanderbilt, whereas last year I was on the sidewalk for this. Definitely save some time. So far the ride's been smooth, I'd say. I'm uh, getting close to halfway there. The sun is rising. I can see much better now. It's awesome. All right, I'm now at the corner of Livingston and Vanderbilt Beach Road. So we're now getting uh, into the heart of rush hour, so traffic should be pretty much non-stop. Can actually put my eye protection back on, which is nice because I got a few bugs in the eyes on the way here. One nice thing about doing this in the monster is I don't have, I don't have to have any concerns with uh, making it there. With the M Super, I actually had low battery. I made it with about 10% left, but the uh, my Monster is a 1600 watt hour uh, battery, so going 23, 24 miles should be no big deal. My uh, M Super is only the 820 watt hour battery. This bike lane on Livingston kind of sucks. There's uh, lots of areas where it's just like uh, has a bunch of small ridges in it, and uh, it doesn't make for a very comfortable riding experience. Well, I just noticed the bike lane ends here, so I guess I'll be crossing. It's weird, I thought the bike lane on Livingston went further than this. I knew it, it didn't go the whole way, but I thought it went further than this, so... Looks like I'm going to be on sidewalk the rest of the way on Livingston. break my calves I already feel the soreness setting in all right so I just crossed Golden Gate Parkway which is the uh, last huge intersection to get across so yeah things are going <coughs> things are going fine no big complaints We got three uh, lights, which means hopefully we have about 60% battery right now. All right, I'm approaching Radio Road. We're getting close. I might actually get to work by eight o'clock. Not the most fun riding conditions here, but uh, like I said, I'm close, so. All right, we are on Airport Road, my uh, final road. 
lots of uh, obstacles here lots of cross streets entrances to businesses uneven sidewalk so yeah but I'm almost there it's uh, on and off ramps here and kind of sneak up on you if you're not ready for them a couple times I almost lost my balance Crossed uh, Davis Boulevard, my last major intersection. All right, so I've uh, arrived in my office. The trip went well, and uh, tune in for part two about nine hours from now. See you then.